Season 3 Part 2. Here we go. Those birds again. It's the birds. Yeah, they're pretty much doomed. Right. Right, which is why this is such a big deal. Trying to retake the wall. There's so much writing on this. Yeah. Yeah. There's the slightest glimmer of hope right now. They got a new queen. They beat the most disgusting titan of all time. Erwin smiled. <laughs> yeah. And it's this belief, this hope, that makes me so nervous. This was such an awesome scene, though. You just do your best. <laughs> you just make the, the best choice you can see in the moment. And have faith. Oh, it's the- I can't watch it, right? It gives away a lot of the season. But we're back to like the- the national anthem type songs. Is it weird that I'm talking with my eyes closed? I'm forever gonna miss Red Swan though. Forever. I love Red Swan. A moment of silence for Red Swan. We'll always wonder in our hearts. What's the truth? <laughs> the town where everything began. <sighs> oh yeah, they sleep at night. Oh no, is this foreshadowing? Is something else right in front of us? What's the truth? <laughs> Her whole expression just changes to excitement. I mean, there's a lot to be afraid of. Oh no, this is a vicious cycle. Oh no, no, no. Man, the pressure he's putting on himself right now. His eternal back and forth. <laughs> you can't lie to Armin. Armin just sees right through everyone, immediately. He knows everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Eren remembers that, that moment. <laughs> because he got eaten. He got eaten by a titan. The first time. I don't know where this is going exactly, but I feel like Armin sees right through Eren's facade and is saying this to cheer him up in a way that doesn't call attention to Eren's fear. Of course Eren's afraid, especially if you're taking responsibility for all of humanity. I love how the thing with Petra way back when in the forest arc is still relevant. I feel like that is the best thing he could do, to put faith in, in this whole crew. I guess it was a simpler time for Eren back then though. Because even though his worldview wasn't as robust as it is now, he was less burdened by doubt, you know? and internal conflict. Things were a lot simpler back then. Armin's always been a visionary. Armin gave him purpose. Those unthinkable fiends. Directly to anger. Very interesting interpretation. Yeah, see, Armin, in his subtle way, cheering him up. Armin would be so dangerous if he became a villain. <laughs> Feels like a lifetime ago. It's been four hours. It feels so great, but also so weird to be back here. It's been a long journey for both the characters and I feel like for me watching this show. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but they did such a great job building up the anticipation for this. It feels huge to be back here. Damn the moon fast. These horses are beasts. <laughs> Good plan. Then they can head to the basement. Right. But they're not counting on the, the monkey titan and Reinhold. Aaron's anonymous. I love this theme. This is gonna bring back all sorts of stuff for Eren. What would they do with that Armin? <laughs> hey, there you go. 
Nice. Well, that's a signal though. There goes the anonymity. So I really like that scene from Eren. He's had a rough time, let's say. And so it's interesting to compare him now to this look at the past we just got. Back then, he was very self-assured. Didn't hesitate, didn't have doubt, but he also had all sorts of issues with, with just the way he thought about the world and his internal state. And it's interesting how sometimes when you improve, you know, when you get things that you need to get, it actually is a step back at first. Eren has basically been a total wreck, but the hope is that you go through that and you, you emerge better. And that's part of why this scene is so rewarding to me. It validates that, that struggle. And the thing I like most about it was that he says we're free, which to me is so interesting because actually they're not free yet in the way Eren initially thought about freedom. But that's such a good insight because in some way their freedom is not really dependent on their circumstances as much as it is their state. It's sort of a weird thing but like in a way they're as free as they ever will be. In the past Aaron's biggest trappings and this goes for just about anybody were not his his circumstances as much as his own his own state. He was sort of a victim of himself. This is something I think about quite a bit because freedom is, is one of my stated goals and it has been for a really long time. And the way I always thought about that was I could point to various things that I felt trapped by. But a little while back I had this moment where I realized that even having acquired those things I'm aiming for, as good as that'll be, you know, just materially or whatever, I already sort of have the things that I need. I can imagine a situation where I get all those things that I thought were freedom, but I'm still trapped emotionally. And in that light, I think sometimes the, you know, the truest freedom is to be found in like just outlook, outlook and values. And, and the people around Aaron, to their credit, have done a great job giving him something to to lean on, giving him a purpose that is stronger, that requires less blame, that's more self-directed, that's also more humble, you know, it just feels really good. But now the question is, can you hold on to those ideals when things start to go wrong, when the circumstances start to slip? Because that's what's about to happen with the Monkey Titan and Reinhold. Well, he got it done. He's been practicing. Aaron showed up. Oh no! <laughs> That's not a good disguise though, because wherever Mikasa is, Aaron surely can't be far away. Yeah man, you did it. Yeah. Yeah, credit where it's due. <laughs> Levi does not get him back down to earth. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, it's both, right? Like, he did a good thing, but it's not over. Very thorough, Armin. Thank you. <laughs> Is it coffee? Is it a uh, morning potion? That's one of Erwin's gifts, recognizing talent. Wow. My boy Armin moving up in the world. Fast. And rightly so. <laughs> yeah, he's a little overwhelmed. This is all happening so fast. <laughs> Put your foot down, Armin. Yeah. This is the, the least of his gambles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Armin's gunning, gunning for the top very fast. What you got in Erwin we trust. Think, Armin, think. What are they, in the walls? The season one ending cliffhanger. There's no way to talk to Armin, your commander. There you go. <laughs> Armin's growth. Remember when he used to be really hesitant? He's one of those people who can just rise to the challenge. I've had a suspicion for a little while that Armin is being set up as the, the future leader of the scouts, assuming that they don't all die. But one small parallel he already has with Erwin in this scene is that he's leading from the front. Here! Here! 
Oh my! You found it. No, Reiner, no. I don't like that. He wasted no time, but that's not gonna do it. This escalated so quickly. He's not alone. Oh, I think we found one. What in the... What did he just do? Did he just... Materialize all those titans? That technique. <laughs> this is insane. No, 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 uh, damn it. <laughs> I can watch the ending, right? <laughs> These openings and endings are such a good job of humanizing the characters, just showing them in their normal lives. This scene hits different now, doesn't it? Interesting that they're focusing so heavily on on their training. Now that I, you know, have made the connection with Red Swan and its significance, I feel like they're all trying to tell, trying to say something, all these credit sequences. Aw, um, Annie. Will we ever see her again, I wonder? My best guess about this significance, assuming that there is any, is that now we're, we're going back to the Reiner Bertholdt thing. And even though I'm, I'm upset that Reiner is killing scouts here, I'm still pretty convinced that there is a major threat coming from inside the walls that leads Reiner, whether or not he's right, to believe that certain things are justified. Part of the tragedy of all this is that they're not really that dissimilar, all these kids. In another universe or another reality, they would never be in this conflict. And, you know, perhaps their hand has been forced, to an extent at least, because they were all born into this world. They inherited the problems and the evils of others, as do we all, I guess. But I'm so hyped for this coming battle. This was set up so so well. Watching the show recently, I feel like I'm more behind the scouts than ever. You know, the, the show's done a great job setting them up to be unified and strong and impressive and able to defy the odds. And also, they've, they've sort of framed the stakes as this being the battle for humanity, right? Which is probably not the full story, but it, it's definitely exciting. <laughs> but simultaneously with the excitement, there's also some terror because I really doubt this ends perfectly, let's say. There's gonna be a heavy cost. And in the in the constant yo-yoing and, and seesawing that is Eren's emotions, for the first time, it feels good. You know, it feels good to see him having arrived at something and it connects so perfectly to them as a whole. But this new resilience Aaron's showing, it's coinciding with things going well, right? Like this is probably the scout's greatest moment ever. You know, maybe humanity's greatest moment ever in Aaron's lifetime. So how will he react when things start to go wrong? Will he be able to give himself hope in the darkest times, so to speak? So ultimately it's thrilling and I can't wait to see where this battle goes, but it'll have to wait. So I'll see you guys next time when Erwin Susume is off the walls and into our hearts.